Ja, herzlich willkommen zurück in der Speakers Corner. Wer jetzt sich gerade in der Ausstellung hier im Jupiter in Hamburg befindet, kann gerne vor zur Bühne kommen, sich hier hinsetzen. Wir haben jetzt gleich einen nächsten Talk. So viel noch in Deutsch. Wir haben Gäste aus Italien zugeschaltet. Die werden sich gleich selber nochmal vorstellen. Das ist Federico und Sino von dem Spiel Universe for Sale, was wir auch hier in der Ausstellung haben. Kommt gerne näher, setzt euch hin um, und lauscht diesem schönen Vortrag. Now I will switch over to English, because the speech will be held in English, by Federico Encino. The title is Between Comics and Video Game. And once again, you can ask questions here in the audience or in two online ways. Either post them in the Twitch chat or if you're in Play Valley, Go to the shrouded stage and talk or message our helper at the left side of it. Have fun. Have fun. Now I'll hand over to Federico and Sina. They are uh, based in Turin, in near the lovely Susa Valley. <laughs> Have fun. Okay. Hello there. Hello there. So, Uh, hi, I'm Zena Colangelo, art director uh, of uh, Universe for Sale. I'm Federico, the developer of the video game. And uh, Universe for Sale is a project that uh, allows us uh, to explore in a particular way uh, the world of video games and comics uh, and bring, uh, bring us here to talk and, uh, of this world between comics and video games. Okay. Before starting, I want to say a few words about our team, which is a really small one, with you are just in three, and uh, this is me, it's Fenzino, and then there is just a third one, which, uh, which is Guillermo, and doing the sound design of, uh, of the entire game. Um, and uh, me, the art director that is essentially doing um, even the story and, uh, and the author in general of the game, and Federico is the developer. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm the developer. Uh, and, um, Okay, yeah. So, what is Universal Sale? It's a sci-fi story, a point-and-click narrative adventure game. It's set on a far future on Jupiter, and in the game, during the game, uh, the player will follow the story of Master, a mysterious cultist, and Lila, a universe vendor. The player will immerse in a deep lore of interstellar religion, where you will meet a lot of tons of wild characters uh, while enjoying uh, totally hand-drawn graphics made by Zeno and uh, in, this is inspired by 80s European comics, but we will talk about it later. And um, the prologue is already, a prologue demo of this title is already on Steam, was released uh, on, one year ago, and uh, on Nietzsche page two. And the, the final release of the game we will be on 2023, but we don't know yet uh, exactly when. And um, very important about this poem is uh, how it was born. Before working in the, in the video game industry, I was basically an illustrator and a comic author. Uh, around 2017, I created a personal project called Universalmente Parlando, in English, uh, universally speaking, a comic of which I released, I released the first page, and then I searched for a publisher who could be interested in financing, financing it. Uh, but uh, I never managed to find an agreement, so the project was put aside until the period of the COVID, COVID period, where one day I talked uh, with uh, Federico uh, about my project and saw the idea, um, born the idea to transpose it in a video game and change the name in Universe for Sale. Uh, so we started working on it, uh, but first of all, we wondered what exactly we wanted to do. What did uh, we want to bring uh, in the gaming market? Uh, um, yeah, uh, we decided to use everything. Uh, uh, I create, uh, uh, no, sorry, I decided to do everything uh, I already created for the comic proposer, um, but with the idea of using it uh, um, uh, with the, uh, connected with the power of the video game to emphasize every aspect and, uh, of the story. So we wanted to create a narrative experience linked to the world uh, of comics in a transversal and unique way. Something that could essentially could keep uh, you glue in uh, on the chair while you're sipping a cup of tea. In a state of reaction, like when you read a good graphic novel in a way that we call the interactive comic book. Uh, so uh, being our first experience in the world of video games, 
we wondered if somebody had already done something like that. Uh, what comes in to mind to the public and the market when you talk about comics and video games, essentially, was the question that we asked. And uh, in our first research, we were a little disappointed. Uh, often, when you talk about comics, it means that uh, you are using, using only some co comic codes, uh, the most pop and referential one. Some examples, uh, for example, are like uh, games like Batman and Spider-Man, where lightings and onomatopoeia appear during the fights uh, to quote the classic comic fights of uh, the superheroes, American superheroes. Or, for example, the dialogues in the Persona series have a wonderful graphic that are reminiscent of the manga style. And then, for example, Borderlands use texture and 3D model that recall the Western comic book uh, art. But all of these games uh, are not meant to be, to have, uh, to make a live the experience of a comic, but only to quote it, essentially. Exaggerate it and bring it uh, closer to the world of animation and cinema. All of these uh, games are great, but we, we aren't, uh, uh, they aren't what we mean to uh, internet to do. So we started to looking uh, to other kinds of video game genres. Uh, one that has um, given us uh, much food for thought is the visual novel. Almost by definition, the visual novel is par excellence the transposition of a book in a video game. Uh, so they concentrate, in fact, the 90% of the gameplay in dialogues, uh, therefore in the reading, uh, leaving space for background, the graphic style, that is often very pleasant uh, to, and nice. Uh, another area that inspires us uh, um, is the one of hand draw games. It's not exactly a general, uh, and often it doesn't have a precise definition. But uh, from what we understand, uh, it includes uh, holded games with a graphic style that seems uh, to be drawn 360 degree by the same person, essentially. Games were, therefore, uh, every time you pause the, the scene, each image you see in the screen presents the same style, uh, maintaining a stylish, stylistic coherence that dominates the world work. Um, this game, in my opinion, is, uh, are works of extreme artistic quality, and we wanted to do something similar of them. Um, yes. Uh, now, having understood this, our goal in general, we move to the project. Uh, we want to be a game to be accessible to anyone, just like a comic book uh, is readable by anyone. And something that, uh, something that uh, left a lot of room uh, for, the art, uh, for the artistic style, so that I could use, uh, uh, we could use him skill as, as a creator, as an illustrator, yeah. Um, and yeah, we want to create a game that could have a lot of dialogues, and narration uh, will be in the in the central of the game, um, such as it was born as as a comic. So uh, it was nat natural to develop a point and click, horizontal scrolling and play, uh, focus on exploration and interaction with surrounding. And yeah, um, so it was very interesting uh, the awareness of our choice about horizontal scroll uh, scrolling. Uh, horizontal scrolling is, uh, since the time of Super Mario Bros, a point of view among the most used in the video game world. But this point of view is also one of the most classic uh, of the world of comics, in particular the European one of the 1780s, uh, where the Franco-Belgian uh, Belgian school made out uh, things like uh, Tenten, Asterix, and later Master like Moebius. Uh, the point of view, uh, far from the character, linked to the clear line, friends' uh, clear line, uh, has a very precise narrative concept. In fact, uh, is uh, called a documentary point of view. It's a narrative style that uh, aims to tell a story in an analytical way, uh, putting all the character in the same um, uh, faraway lever from the, from the spectator. Uh, with less variation as possible, leaving the, to the reader uh, the choice uh, of what to focus on and uh, perhaps uh, not focus on the, uh, first, uh, the, um, the, the first character, but maybe in the less landscape in its details. One example is Edifix, uh, the Asterix dog, 
um, that uh, sometimes you can see uh, a lot of time you can see uh, in the background playing with the uh, with a ball or for example catching some mouse and stuff. So the the, the spectator can choose to follow the story or follow the the background story of Edifix. Is they fall in this kind of uh, narrative is the opposite, for example, of the American and Japanese style, which focuses a lot in, on, the, on the protagonist and uh, what they feel, accentuating them in a caricatural way. Uh, so it was very exciting to come to this conclusion. As we are Euro European, we were glad to bring a part of our artistic history into a video game. Mm. Now we were ready, but where to start? So we start from the, the page that was made from Zeno on the proposal. Uh, we want to like to make the equivalent in video games to see to, 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 um, and see what will come out. No, uh, here, here there are some scenes uh, of the video game. Uh, the result of these scenes are basically the prologue that is uh, already available on Steam. Uh, then we will switch to we have switched to yeah, there is the parallel of this you can see the parallel of the comic page and the result yeah, the on, uh, on the video on the gameplay of the video game here is another scene in which particular showing the 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 lightning and the thunder with light and sound there is sounds too and this was a, a peculiar scene to work on to transport in a, in a video game style um, this uh... Yeah, this is one uh, was was the most difficult to to realize. In the the, the, yeah, in the prologue, it was the creation of the universe, and we we opt to to do a, an editor uh, such a like this. You can see in the in the screen, and yeah, the idea is to transpose a, a stuff that is in a page in a way that a player could play it. Yeah, so could enjoy in the, in the in the game. In a story, there is the Lila that is making a universe that comes out from a cup of tea. In the, in the game, insta instead, is the player that uh, will uh, uh, take the rule of Lila. And um, but um, how we arrive here? Uh, essentially, we start in the same uh, workflow that I have in the in, in when I'm making comics. And when you start making comics, a comic, you start from the storyboard. In the same way. Uh, and the, for this video game, we use essentially the same system, starting by doing hold the asset with a fast storyboard style to set up all the characters and object and position and decide where we will focus for details and other stuff. After the storyboard, then we go on with the finished product. When you make a comic book page, you will work on various levels. These levers are basis, a basis of, um, for example, a basic of uh, line art. Um, that is a basic design of the page. There's a, then a superimposed lever of color called flat. Um, then you add the shadow and a lever of fusion that acts on the president, which often when you, for example, you're working on a digital uh, composition, uh, you put the layer in a, in a multiply set, in a multiply for, um, focus setting. And then you'll add the light effect with, uh, with work as an overlay of the previous uh, layers. Same, things, uh, same thing we did on the video game. A level of line art colored with a flat color, then brought to life uh, by the shadow on multiples and uh, accentuated by the overlay lights. Um, uh, the last part that we want to focus uh, a bit is the animation. For this game, we choose a frame-by-frame -frame animation style. Uh, this is because uh, it allows us uh, to work on uh, each frame as it were an illustration of itself. Uh, itself. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, our project, uh, as our project is focused largely on uh, illustration, we had plenty of room to add animated details. Uh, here are some examples to give an idea of the work we are doing. The goal is to use the animation to make the environment of the story important and alive, uh, so that each scene of the game will be like a living illustration. Uh, I would like to make a, a small uh, focus on the method of animation I use. I will not go very precisely on the technical side as every artist finds this path, uh, path uh, the method that suits him uh, so imposing mine would be wrong in my opinion. 
But what I can say is that, like everything else in the game, my method of work is not far, far away uh, from the way I worked when I was a comic book author. Uh, I use the same program, in my case, uh, Clip Studio Paint, very well stocked for both illustration and animation. And I use the same method that I would use if I made a comic book page. So sketch, line art, flat, co flat color, and then shadow and light. And this, in some ways, is a classical way of working in the animation, but it was very useful to keep the same style throughout the game. Um, so, and uh, I would like uh, to do a, a small focus in the method. No, no, no so the oh, no. Oh, oh, we finished, actually. Oh, we finished? Yeah. Uh, ah, so, ah, no, okay, there is a user interface. Okay, perfect. Uh, there is a, a little small focus on the user interface. In, uh, during this, um, during uh, this, uh, in, uh, we put a lot of effort in a, in a part of the video game uh, uh, that uh, usually is not well, uh, the developer don't uh, recognize a lot, is uh, the user interface, so every aspect that is uh, the menu, the banner of the, where you put the text, uh, the little details that uh, help the player uh, choose what uh, to think about. Uh, all of this stuff, uh, we put a lot of effort to keep the same style of the of the rest of the game. So we use, for example, the same animation style, the same uh, uh, the same um, uh, style like a hand draw style, and the same brushes and everything. Uh, and after that, uh, we are done. And um, yeah, if you if you have any question, I don't know if you have time. We are here to answer them. Uh, if you don't have time, we, we are. You, you can find us on LinkedIn or everything you by searching our name. And thank you. Yeah, you know, it's for sale. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Good. Thank you very much for your presentation. We have some questions here in the audience. Okay. Wait, wait. Microphone. Test, test. Ah, hello, uh, I'm Rahe. I am one of the two curators from the festival, so I've already spoken uh, numerous amounts of times to the two of you. First of all, what a wonderful game. We're so happy to have you on board here, as I've told you many times. But I was wondering, um, the demo, or rather the prologue, is quite reflective, it's quite relaxing, but also very mysterious. Um, when you're looking at the final game, what are you hoping that players will take from it? How do you want players to feel at the end of Universe for Sale? What can we look forward to? Thank you. Nice question. At the end of the, the total game. Um, I hope in general to feel like, as I say in the, in the presentation, to feel that uh, you are reading, a, you are you are handing to you a, a very well story, something something a very well crafted that uh, maybe is that remains uh, something in uh, inside your heart or and um, but uh, yes, it's, um, it's, we, we we can't we can do it. Uh, say a lot of spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> to say, it's, not, it's not a fresh because we don't want to to say okay there is. That I want everybody will see, and that one I want everybody will see, and maybe maybe it's not uh, it's not far away from uh, from what you when you finish to play the program, what you feel about when you play in the program. It's not far away from that because uh, even when you finish the game, I want you want that uh, remains uh, a feeling of mysterious even after to to keep you imagining the world that you already seen uh, in uh, that you already played uh, in the in total so it's not far away from what you are already playing in the but more obviously a big more <laughs> awesome okay. that sounds good thank you yeah thank you for that are there any questions in the audience one more question here on the left um yeah i was i was wondering it's, it's a it's a really wonderful game i uh, just played it like like uh, one hour ago half an hour ago in the exhibition um, Great. And um, like I was wondering, uh, you you t talked about the the process from from um, making a video game out of a comic book and like how how uh, the stylistic um, 
like it, it's a, it's so well. Uh, how how do I how do I say that? Um, like is was there was there one um, one extremely big difference difference you you made um, in um, wait let, let me let me think about it for a moment <laughs> how, how, to ask, how to ask what I want to ask <laughs> okay easy, easy. Uh, thank you we okay we give give it a second. Uh, in the Twitch channel, there are no more questions, but uh, Kirin Ricky uh, wrote down um, lovely comic style. And um, yeah, in, if you're here in Hamburg, you can come to the exhibition you, and you can play the game Universal Sail this evening here uh, at Jupiter or the whole week uh, online at the Play Valley. So, what's about the question? Yeah, okay, I'll try, I'll try again. I'm not sure if it's, if it's even uh, answerable. Um, but uh, was there something where you thought like, oh yeah, we, we want to have that in the game because it was in the, in the um, comic book, but then you thought, okay, it, it just doesn't work in, mm. uh, in the game. What, what would work in the comic book? Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, in general, it's very tough because uh, there is some stuff that is uh, obviously is easier to to make more in the in the in the video game. Easier that is easier to to do it in the comic book. And for example, when you uh, when I talk about uh, something that um, emphasizes the narrative, it's because obviously in the video game you can choose to go deeper inside the story. You can choose to don't go in that path, but maybe in another for a while uh, and see some stuff that uh, maybe if you're doing a, a single comic book, obviously you have uh, to follow the story and to finish it uh, and in a strict number of pages. So it's, uh, it's complex uh, to, to tell everything you want to tell uh, in a single book. And the video game uh, gives that liberty that is very, it's wonderful for this kind of uh, story. But obviously, uh, it's very hard to, um, as, how can I say, to, re to remain focused that it is a video game. For example, we told about the fact that uh, we port uh, the, the transition, the creation of the universe from the from the uh, from the from the page to uh, to the video game, and uh, this transition is hard because uh, we have to remember that we are. Is not uh, is not enough to simply show uh, the creation of you, the universe. We must uh, make feel the player the the, the player that is uh, is uh, is getting inside the story. So is uh, every time we have to think. Okay, maybe we we have to put more interaction, more interaction, more interaction. Is is not only a a slide show of uh, of uh, of pages. And uh, but it's very challenging. It, it is very it's making make this effort, putting this effort. It makes uh, some uh, every time it's making something that is very new, even for us. Uh, and uh, oh, it's a very nice idea. And uh, and then it go on and go on. So it's something in the middle. Yeah, so we have a, ba a balance. Basically, yeah, it's a balance. It's a balance between so. the comic book and the video game. Mm. Okay, I've got. Uh, Quite similar question. The final question is uh, in just one word, please. What's the power of your comic book and what's the power of the game? One word for each. The power of the comic book and the game? Two words, one yeah. for each. Yeah, one uh, for each. Okay, I, I, I stop for the comic book. For me, it is the, for, me for, for the video game, uh, I say handcrafted. Handcraft? And crafted. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Federico. Mm, uh, for the uh, video game side. Uh, for video game side. For the uh, uh, side. It's, uh, it's easy, but I would say intriguing. <laughs> intriguing for the video game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for, but, but because it's a mix between two, basically. For the for the for the for the comic book, uh, for him, I think it's difficult because he never read it at all because it never I never finish it. But ah, okay. the comic book, I say. More intriguing. <laughs> Very I say more intriguing, I, I would say. So it's, uh, it's interesting. More entry, intriguing, recommending with streaming. Okay. So 
Thank you very much, Federica and Sino. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for the audience online. It was a great pleasure to follow the speeches today. Unfortunately, the time is up for the speaker's corner. In a few minutes, the program continues with Walk With Me Vergangenheit. So stay tuned on Twitch and uh, we will make a short break here to get the stage ready. In the meantime, you are welcome to take a closer look at the exhibition here in Hamburg at Jupiter or the Play Valley. Have fun at Play 22. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. It's your applause. <laughs>